The scripture today comes from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This passage was written not in anticipation of the birth of Jesus, but in anticipation of his return. The second coming, as it's called, or the, uh, where the season of the reign of Jesus. And I think it's appropriate, though, that we apply this to the coming of the birth of Jesus because we live in this kind of a, a world in which we're always anticipating the arrival of Christ. Whether it was before, before the birth of Jesus or, or after the, the resurrection, we anticipate his presence in our lives. That's where we live as Christians. Now this passage, though, is a mighty tall order. Pray without ceasing. How many of you do that? Good loyal disciples, how many of you do that? No hands up, good. <laughs> That's a tall order. How do you do that? There's a commandment right there. <laughs> Well, we could say and try to dismiss it a little bit as hyperbole. You know, we know that the Bible does speak in hyperbole. It over, overstates certain things in order to make, a, to make a point. For example, there's one place in the Old Testament where they talk about one of those wars they had where they killed all the enemy, and then they sold the survivors into slavery. It's there. I'll, you guys look it up and tell me where it is because I couldn't find it this week, but I know it's there. I've read it before. Hyperbole. Maybe this is hyperbole. Maybe, maybe it just doesn't really mean we're supposed to pray all the time, but pray a lot. But I don't really think that's what the author had in mind when Paul wrote this. I think perhaps what he was thinking is pray in all things. Whatever life circumstances, pray and give thanks to God in all things. I think that fits the mood of Paul a little better. So you can uh, be relieved of the guilt of not praying without ceasing. But maybe now we can apply it to our lives in a more usable way. You know, from time to time, I, I, and we all come across folks who seems like life bombards them all of a sudden with all kinds of problems, all kinds of grief, all kinds of misery. And sometimes someone will make the statement, well, God never gives us more than we can handle. You ever heard that? That may be true. But I've noticed sometimes when I talk to folks who are, are in real difficult situations, they tell me a lot more than what God gave them. I remember one woman from a previous appointment who, who told me that she was having troubles. She was having health problems, serious health problems. And her family wasn't being supportive. And what's more, she was angry at her first husband for having abandoned her. And she was worried about whether her money was going to hold out the rest of her life. It seemed like God had given her more than she could handle. Until we began to look at each one of her concerns. She had carried the burden of her first husband... Therefore, she was carrying and chose to carry the burden of the past. God didn't give her that. And she was worried about her future finances sometime out in the distant future. 
But she had no control over that either. God didn't give her that. Those weren't the burdens that God gave her. But by the time she added those burdens of her own onto what, God, what had come to her in the present, her life seemed impossible. And I've abbreviated that story. I'll tell you that, that. There was a lot of stuff in it. Was she suffering? Yes, she was suffering. But part of it came from t- taking on burdens God never gave her. Now, I want to talk about that God gave us burdens kind of thing. I, there's a way in which that's true and in a way in which I do not hold it to be true. I don't think God is sitting out there someplace throwing burdens at us. You know, like chucking stones at somebody sitting down below you on the hill, you know? I don't think that's what God does. He says, hey, you know, Hallie, can I give you some... There you go. Ha! There's a burden. Hey, and while you're not looking, here's another one. God can throw with both left and right hands. I don't think that's how God functions. God is a creative God. God is a God of truth. And the truth is, when... Creation comes along and things change. Other things have to shift around. There's an old expression, change one thing, you change everything. And I think as God creates, brings into creation a new world daily, momentarily, every moment, there comes complexity and things shifting around. And when things shift around, that creates friction. That creates complexity that Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's a struggle to adapt to that new situation, that new reality, that new truth. But if God is truth, that situation, in that sense, might be brought to us by God. But it's not like God's placing a burden on us to see how we perform. You know, like pushing us down with his thumb and seeing when we scream. That's not my image of God, and I hope it's not yours. But reality and truth comes along, and yes, we do have times of suffering. And what do we do in that time of suffering? We can wallow in it. We can continue the downward spiral, and we can start adding stuff, because that's kind of what happens when you start feeling down, right? Right? He's saying, and oh, by the way, I'm unhappy about this, and I'm unhappy about that, and that old spiral just goes round and round. But Paul says, let's change everything. Let's rejoice in the life we have, even with its burdens. Let's thank God for the opportunity to witness God's greatness in this time. In my internship before I was ordained, I visited a woman who had a real life suffering. Uh, It was a spinal fluid problem that caused her excruciating pain on a repetitive basis. She'd have some relief and then it hit pain and it was going to kill her. And there wasn't anything they could do about it. And I asked her, how how do you bear up under this? You know, how, how, how are you doing this? He says, well, when the pain goes away, I pray for other people. And that keeps my mind off, and it keeps me going in the right direction. When you pray, the trajectory of life is changed towards one of burden to one of hope, one of expectation. And so we're, we're in this season now where we're looking forward to the arrival of Christ in expectation. But how do we get there? I think maybe sometimes it helps just to reverse the imagery. We're waiting for Christ to come into our lives. How about we go to Christ? How about we begin to take the steps towards Jesus? Can we do that in our lives today? And I think that's what Paul is talking about here in this passage. I think he's talking about you start making some moves. You start going forward. You start communicating with God. You start praying to God. Have a conversation and move forward. And maybe it's not so much about Jesus coming to us. Jesus is present. Jesus is here. But are we 
going to Jesus? Are we moving towards Christ? And to do that in the Wesleyan tradition is called going on to perfection. It's called on to sanctification. It's a sanctifying act to move in that direction, to change our world by changing our minds, by praying and hoping and expecting. We expect his arrival. And as we learned last week, God is faithful. And this passage ends with that. God is faithful. You move towards God, you'll find God. Because God is faithful. God is not hidden, except by our own blindness. But God is revealed. He's revealed in Jesus Christ. And he becomes revealed in you to the extent that you reflect that truth, that gospel, that love, that generosity, that hope, that expectation, that truth. Paul elsewhere says, let us pray that we have that mind in us which is also in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what we pray for. That's what we look forward to. And God will be faithful. Amen.